to the next clip, which is the Wolf Conservation Center. I got to meet and learn about some of the very cool wolves they've got there. Have a look. Here I am at the Wolf Conservation Center in South Salem, New York, home to some of America's most beautiful wolves. Here you can learn about the species, meet some of the wolves, and understand why this center is so important for our community. Let's explore it together. Here I am with Maggie Howell, Managing Director, and Spencer Wilhelm, Operations Manager of the Wolf Conservation Center. So tell me guys, how long have you been open? Um, the Wolf Conservation Center was founded in 1999, so almost a decade now. Wow, and how long have you worked here? Um, almost three years, next month. Ooh, and what about you, Spencer? About two and a half years. Wow. So what is the mission of the Wolf, Wolf Conservation Center, would you say? Well, we're here to promote wolf conservation. You know, we want to do that by teaching people about wolves. Mm -hmm. We talk about the job that the wolf is going to do in nature. And then, of course, what we all can do as a community to help protect their future. Mm -hmm. And that is really unknown as far as people in the suburban area. So that I'm sure it's, you know, very beneficial to have something like this here. Now, say people want to volunteer. Are they available to volunteer? And what is a volunteering day like? Uh, they're definitely uh available to volunteer. Uh, we are actually a volunteer-based organization. Uh, started all on volunteers 10 years ago. And um, a typical volunteer day can vary. Uh, we always need help on our education programs, um, assisting the kind of keeping an extra eye on the on the crowd with the wolves. Uh, we do a lot of off-site visits with our traveling ambassador wolf. I hear you guys go to Borders. Uh, we <laughs> went to Borders in April, so uh, he's he's been around all over the Northeast. Does he have a passport yet? No. <laughs> so here we are with the wolves. These are their ambassador wolves, which are essentially their teaching tools when they go around to schools to teach. Yes. Um, actually, when the visitors come, they'll meet uh, two different enclosures or two different packs of wolves. Uh, one is this first pack of three, and we have, let me see if I can get to them. Uh, this is Apache, who is our alpha male to the pack. He's an Arctic gray wolf uh, that's 11 years old, and you can tell he's, he's liking the a little morsel I'm giving him right yeah. now. And he is quite beautiful. Yeah, let's see if we can get him out of the mix. And then we have <laughs> this young lady here. Her name's Kyla. She's actually our oldest wolf, 13 years old. She's a Canadian Grey or a Rocky Mountain Wolf, so the kind you would find out in the Yellowstone and Idaho. And is um, she your only female wolf? She's our only female ambassador. Okay. We have a lot of females okay. here, uh, but only female ambassador wolf people will meet. Let's get him back out of here. And then we have, <laughs> here Kyla, you go too, Lucas who's being shy right now, but that's the way wolves Look are. Look at those eyes on Lucas. He's, he's got beautiful eyes, very photogenic. But yeah. he's a 10-year-old Canadian gray wolf, just like Kyla. Uh, probably the biggest wolf here, roughly 95 pounds. Oh, wow. And he could probably go play for the Yankees the way he can catch this meat. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here with Atka, the only traveling wolf. Tell me a little bit about where he's been and why you travel with him. Uh, Atka is, I like to call him our best wolf teacher, but also our strangest wolf, and that's because he travels. Uh -huh. And getting into a van and going to a place he's never he been. He travels in a van? Exactly. And seeing lots of faces that he's never seen is a very unwolf-like thing to do. Wolves are very naturally yeah. frightened of people. But uh, he's a wonderful education tool, and he uh, has been to many schools all over the Northeast, museums, libraries. Has he really? Nature What's centers. the farthest place he's been? Uh, the farthest place he's been was Washington, D.C., actually. Oh he went last year to help uh, introduce a bill to stop aerial hunting of wolves in Alaska. That is unbelievable. So Atka not, Atka not only uh, teaches people about wolves, but helps speak up for wolves that might not have voices in the I wild. I like it. I like it. He's a real figure in the community. He is. He is. <laughs> How old is he? Uh, Atka just turned six in May. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he's our youngest ambassador wolf. And uh, a lot of our uh, volunteers and our curator actually helped raise Atka. Mm -hmm. So it was a really great time to be a volunteer at that time. It sounds like it. So now that we've met all of the ambassador wolves that you've got here, you're going to tell me a little bit more about the other wolves you have here at the Conservation Center. Definitely. Um, we do have our four ambassador wolves. These are the wolves that people get to see when they come and visit, and also Atka when we go to their place to visit. But we also have an additional 25 Mexican gray wolves Whoa. and two red wolves here at the center. And these are wolves that are off exhibit because they're critically endangered, and many of them are candidates for release in the wild. So it's really essential they're not used to seeing people if we want them to have a chance of survival in the wild. That makes complete sense. And so how do you maintain these wolves, or do you just let them live on their own? Uh, it's difficult. It's difficult taking care of animals that you're not allowed to interact with or even see sometimes. <laughs> Could you so imagine? it's a, definitely a challenge for our curator. Uh, she has six different enclosures that she goes up to to make sure that everyone is healthy, everyone is fed. How does she know? 
Uh, we have surveillance cameras. Ooh, They're that makes down. sense. That is very clever. <laughs> He's a star, right into the mic. He knows his spot. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Thank you so much to the people at the Wolf Conservation Center for showing me such an amazing place and teaching me all about the wolves and their importance in our community. Check them out at nywolf.org and schedule your appointment to meet Kai and all of the wolves this weekend. I loved going there. The people were so nice and the wolves were beautiful. Check them out at nywolf.org. You can learn about their volunteering programs, their educational, photography, and seasonal events. nywolf.org. It's a really wonderful, wonderful place to be. Now, courtesy Maggie Howell of the Wolf Conservation, we are going to do the top six fun facts of the wolves at the Wolf Conservation Center up in South Salem. Number six, even a wiener dog or a toy poodle is as closely related to a wolf as a husky or a German shepherd. Number five, Adult wolves feed their young by throwing up a little and then letting them eat it. Talk about your homemade baby food. Number four, only the mom and the dad in the pack lift their leg to pee while the others squat. Number three, although the people at the center do not feed their wolves live prey, occasionally a critter makes a really bad career move. Number two, Akka, the wolf we met there, has a fish in his pond named Peter. And the number one fun fact about the wolves at the Wolf Conservation Center, wolves in the wild do not dress in nightgowns and eat your grandma. Maybe your dog, I don't know. <laughs> now let's have one more song from Melissa. New shoes, can't even stand them no more. Toes poking through. Don't even want them no more. Buy them hot. La 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 la. On the wire. La 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 la. New shoes. La 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 la. On the wire. La 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 la. Throw them up. Old shoes, don't even want them no more. Toes poking through, can't even stand them no more. Throw them up. <laughs> And now to finish off the show, we're going to go to our trivia question from last time. The trivia question is, what famous action star graduated from SUNY Purchase College? The answer to the trivia question from last time comes from Jennifer R., who emailed me at jess at jessicaspencer.com and says, hey Jess, is the answer Wesley Snipes? Yes, very good guess, very good guess. And now the new trivia question for next time is, Buffalo Bob Smith, the TV host who voiced and created the character Howdy Doody, resided in what Westchester County area? Email me at jess at jessicaspencer.com with the answer, with show ideas, or with things you'd like to promote. You can always check out past shows at youtube.com slash towningaround, and always at my website, jessicaspencer.com slash towningaround. Thanks, and see you next time. <laughs>